Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us through this, uh, this test of technology here. It's going to be a first for me, and I hope you guys learn a lot too. Uh, my name is Jeremy Lane. I'm a public information specialist with the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish in Las Cruces. Uh, helping us out behind the scenes is our Assistant Chief of Information, James Pittman. Uh, you may see some uh, polls uh, pop up on the screen from time to time. Uh, James is behind the scenes helping us with that. Um, so yeah, um, first I want to thank, there is a biologist at White Sands Missile Range um, who keeps these live native snakes at his house um, and allows uh, me to use them for education outreach uh, like this. Uh, his name's Doug Burkett. So uh, uh, everybody say, thanks Doug for letting us use the snakes. Uh, and without further ado, uh, let's, let's get into it. You know, um, a lot of people have an undue fear of snakes. Um, and I hope that we uh, at least diminish that a little bit uh, this evening. Um, I think we tend to fear what we don't understand. And so I think opportunities like this where um, I can talk to people about snakes and how they're, they're not all that scary uh, really helps with that, with that fear. So with that said, we're gonna start out with one of those poll questions. Really simple. James is gonna pop it up on your screen. Are you afraid of snakes? Really easy. You didn't know there was going to be a quiz tonight, did you? But yeah, uh, just uh, they're, they're anonymous, so don't worry about that. Uh, be honest with yourself. And uh, this lets me know if, uh, if I'm being effective. Are you afraid of snakes? We'll give everybody just a couple of seconds to get going on that. It also gives me an opportunity to pull out our first snake. See, those poles are sneaky. It's misdirection while I get ready. And uh, James is gonna show us the results as soon as when everyone's had a chance to vote there. Are you afraid of snakes? So if you're in the maybe column, go ahead and count that as a yes. And let's see how we fare. Oh, you know, right around 50-50. Uh, yeses are 42%, noes are 58%. Uh, so yeah, thanks for answering that. And um, my job tonight is to work on you 42%. I'm, I'm here to change some hearts and some minds about our Spiele friends that uh, uh, snakes are amazing, fascinating components of their ecosystems, and they're not scary at all. Uh, but even for the folks who don't like snakes, I have a snake for you. A snake for people who don't like snakes. This happens to be one of my favorites too. This is a desert king snake. They get that name, king snake, because they have a propensity of eating other snakes. King cobras eat other snakes. King snakes eat other snakes. This guy is a to right in New Mexico and parts adjacent. Super shiny skin. If you see a black and yellow snake, you know you've got a very beneficial snake on your property. A desert king snake. So the eyes can even eat rattlesnakes. Um, they are immune to that venom. They've been known to, to eat snakes that are long than themselves by folding the snake and then starting to swallow at that fold. Pretty amazing little tanks. Let me get a close up there. This is a dead king snake, black and yellow speckles, sometimes with black saddles down the back. Other times the yellow will be more pronounced. The belly is also pretty heavily speckled. I love king snakes. Uh, there's a number of species across the U.S., but they're usually very, very docile, easy to handle, and they're just little tanks because they eat venomous snakes. You see one of these guys on their property, absolutely leave them alone. He's there to protect black rodents. Maybe even a rattlesnake or two. Desert king snake. One of my favorites. Do we have any questions, uh, James, uh, for the desert king snake? Uh, not so far. And that brings up a good point that if you have questions as we're going through, you can add them in the chat and we'll try to get to them as we go. And then we'll also have, if you have like general snake questions, 
we'll have a little Q and A at the end as well. Uh, we keep the snakes in what really amounts to pillowcases. It's just a, a soft fabric bag. Uh, that way they can breathe through it. You don't want to store a snake in like a garbage bag or a Ziploc. Um, they are a living, breathing, vertebrate creature, so you don't want to suffocate them. They've got to be able to breathe. Uh, so we keep them in these bags. Let's try another poll question. We throw up our next poll question there, James. Maybe a lot, James. No worries. Perfect moves on. So notice one of the questions about like how uh, poisonous or venomous are they? Many uh, snakes tonight are venomous. Um, and that's the better word to use than poison. Uh, so poison is ingested. Uh, so poison you eat, uh, like mushroom can be poisonous. Uh, or some fish can be poisonous to you if eaten. Um, venom is injected. So um, a scorpion sting, that's venom. Um, certainly venom. So these guys are not venomous. These are all harmless venomous snakes. Sticking with king snakes. Let me show you another one. This gorgeous creature is called a gray banded king snake. You can see that it's got gray and orange bands. Now, these guys are pretty rare in New Mexico. Uh, they've only been documented, I think, a couple of times as a uh, roadkill in Carlsbad. But they are in the state, probably a lot more prevalent than we're aware of because they're so secretive. King snakes like to live in burrows and uh, rock crosses and things like that. This is a ray banded king snake. Let's see if I can get the focus there. Ray banded king snake. These guys are going to be um, predominantly lizard eaters, but they wouldn't pass up a rodent or a bird nest, something like that. Let's see if we can get a little closer. Bandage King Snake. Very cool species, kind of rare in Mexico. Did we get James back yet? James, are you there? Here comes James. Can you throw up another poll question for us there, James? All right, quiz time again. One characteristic of snakes is that they all lay eggs. True or false? They are reptiles. Do all snakes lay eggs? Let's see what you guys have to say. Give you a chance to vote here. We'll bring out our next ambassador. We got results on that one yet, yeah, James? Let's see what you guys said. Uh, one characteristic of sex is that they all lay eggs. 42% said true, 58% said false. So not all snakes lay eggs. They do not. Um, many snakes give live birth, including our rattlesnake species, our garbage snake species. Um, we don't have too many water snakes, but uh, water snakes is another group that uh, can, can also give live birth. So yeah, they don't all lay eggs.
Next up, I hope you guys like neon. Because here is a neon pink snake. This is a coach. You can see those great big eyes because this guy is a daytime hunter. And he is one of our fast snakes. Hot pink. Now they can come in a variety of colors. Um, this, this pink color is more prevalent in the northern half of the state, you know, uh, Santa Fe Way. Um, down here where I am in Las Cruces, they're more of a same beige color. They're called a coach trip. If I can get them to cooperate here, because their tail looks like a braided feather whip. Can you see that? Slender and long. And these guys are hunting for lizards or what have you. They can actually periscope up above the grass, kind of like uh, you know your characteristic cobra pose, and to see where they're going. And they are very fast. You need to be in good shape to catch your twit. Super cool snake. Now, what he's doing there for the camera with his tongue. He's trying to figure out what's going on. Check that out. So he's tasting the air. He picks up particles from the air, brings, them, brings his tongue back into his mouth, uh, where there's an organ called the Jacobson's organ. And um, that lets his brain interpret it. Like, you know, is this, uh, is this something I can climb on? Is this something I need to be scared of? Um, you may have heard of myth that six tongues will sting you. I've actually heard that before. That's not true. Both would have this really pronounced eyebrow. Can you guys see that? It like has an eyebrow. And a brow. He probably has a large one. But really big eyes for day hunting. And he's being very cooperative. Appreciate that, Mr. Coach. Pretty long snake. These guys can you know, five, six feet long. And they're just a uh, flash scales when you see them. Gotta be quick. Gorgeous little snake to coach with. Eating lizards, um, again, eating um, big birds, bird eggs, um, probably insects when they're very young, of course, rodents, that kind of thing. Can you guys see? Let's see if you'll cooperate. Right there, on top of that eye. Do you guys see that? He's uh, he's shedding that 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 scale. Trying to help him out there. So yeah, shakes, snakes shed their skin. Kind of hard to say. Uh, whenever they outgrow this one, so it depends on like how they're being fed and stuff like that. Uh, do we shed our skin? Yeah, we sure do. Uh, we just do it at a cellular level, uh, so you don't really notice it that much. But uh, maybe you've gotten a sunburn, and you've seen a larger patch that's going to come off kind of flaky like that. We do indeed shed our skin. Snakes just do it all the time. That's our coach work. So, Jeremy, you have a question. Are coach whips also called red racers? Yes. Absolutely, for that reason that you just saw, because um, because they can be bright pink, especially in the northern part of the state. Yes, absolutely. I've uh, I've seen black in Florida, um, where I'm from, in kind of central eastern Texas. I've seen maroon coach whips, and like I was saying before, down here in the desert southwest, we see them more like beige sand color. Um, so that's a problem with, uh, with, with animals in general is, uh, uh, common names. So maybe, maybe you and I are talking about a snake that we saw in our garden and you're saying, um, well, I had a red racer and I'm like, oh, that's funny. I had a coach whip in my garden the day before. We might not know that we're talking about the exact same species. So that's why, um, every species known to science is assigned a scientific name. Um, that guy's name is Mastacophis flagellum, if you're curious. But that way, even people who speak two different languages 
know that they're talking about the exact same species, but one species can have many, many, many common names. There's a couple of general questions here. Um, one asking about snake skin, if you can find snake skin out in the desert or out where you're hiking around. And then the other question is why you're not getting bit. <laughs> uh, I guess, I guess so. we'll start with the first question first, right? Okay, um, so yeah, you can absolutely, if you've got a keen eye, uh, look for uh, shed skin. And if you've got property where you've got maybe a, a little bit of land and uh, maybe you've got a barn or something like that, look around. Maybe you've got some, some snake shed around there. Um, not hard to find at all, especially if you're, if you're looking under boards and looking under rocks where they felt a little more secure uh, during that vulnerable time. And then uh, the reason I'm not getting bit is because these guys have, have been in captivity for a while. These guys are education species. Um, they're here to, to teach people about snakes and they're, they're good ambassadors. But you roll the dice every time you're working with live animals. Um, at any point in today's presentation, I could be bit um, or I could be defecated upon. <laughs> I'd, I'd much rather get bit, to tell you the truth. Um, so a snake bite from these guys is, is nothing to be scared of. Um, you guys have had paper cuts. Every single paper cut I have ever had is worse than a snake bite. Um, so when I get bit by a snake, I use just wipe it off. It stops bleeding pretty fast. Uh, and that's it. Um, certainly if you're near a, a sink or some hand sanitizer, you can, you can disinfect it. But, um, you know, it, I, I've been working for, for days on end in the field before and not disinfected it. And it's, it's, it's just fine. It's just fine. Um, not a problem whatsoever. Um, paper cuts, you're gonna, you're gonna reopen it, it's gonna sting, it's gonna get infected, you're gonna feel that for days. But a snake bite, you'll forget about it in a couple hours. I think it's just the, uh, the startle uh, that gets you. Uh, the, the, that initial something, something's biting me. But no, it, it doesn't really hurt that bad and uh, it's a, it, it goes away pretty fast too. Did we have any other questions about Coach Whip? Uh, one more general question um, asking, how do you tell if the skin has been freshly shed? Well, if it's really, really fresh, it'll still be wet and malleable. Um, but other than that, um, it'll, get, it'll get torn apart pretty quickly the more time it's sat out there in the environment. Um, it'll be missing more pieces. Uh, the sun will dry it out. The wind will get to it. Um, but yeah, if you find it intact, you can still see the eye covers, the scales that cover the eyes. Um, that's probably pretty fresh. Yeah. Any other ones? Um, last one here, and then we can jump into the third poll if you want. Um, if someone gets bit by a snake, should they call the ambulance? These snakes, absolutely not. And I wanna talk a little bit about the end, a very, very simple way uh, that I can, I can tell you how to differentiate um, a dangerous snake from a non-dangerous snake in our air specific area. So we're going to save that till the end. Um, but these guys, not at all. Not, not at all. You've had worse paper cuts, I assure you. Let's try another poll question. Snakes can carry which of the following? Rabies, Lyme disease, bubonic plague, all of the above, none of the above. What do you guys think? Which of those diseases can snakes carry? While I get out our next contestant. Remember, all of these are native to New Mexico. I think it's pretty cool. If you want to watch uh, someone showing snakes on TV, uh, snakes are beautiful, fascinating creatures. But I also want you to appreciate the wildlife in your backyard. So that's why all of these can be seen right here. Let's see what you guys thought about for which of these diseases snakes can carry. All right, good job, everybody. 
Uh, the prevalent answer was none of the above, and that is absolutely correct. So snakes can't carry rabies or Lyme disease or plague that rodents and vectors living on rodents can, which is super important. So imagine, imagine you're, a, you're a desert king snake and you're gonna eat a mouse. Um, you have no hands, so you don't have the opportunity uh, or the tools to pick off any fleas or ticks off that mouse. You ingest it whole, thus removing pathogens from the environment that could kill us, our livestock, our pets, um, our wildlife. So snakes help keep rodent populations in check and they can't carry any of those. Pretty cool. Our next guy, or gal, This is a Great Plains rat snake. And he's a little squirmy. Don't cancel out my video, bud. Kind of dark, but I want you to see that he kind of has saddles down his back. You can kind of see that, darker saddles. This is a darker individual. I've known these individuals to be a little lighter gray. These are very closely related to corn snakes. So if you know corn snakes from the pet trade, or maybe you've lived in the area where there were corn snakes, these are in the same genus. So they're, they're very closely related to corn snakes. These guys, just like the name would imply, let's see if I can get you to stay still, eat a lot of rodents. They're a rat snake. Excellent climbers. They'll go up trees to get to bird nest or uh, tree cavities. And there he is taste in the air with his tongue again, just to try to figure out what's going on. Am I a threat? Nah, he's just being chill. Again, this is a really dark individual. I've known this, I've known this species to be a lot lighter. I'll show you guys the belly. This is a Great Plains rat snake. Any questions about Mr. Great Plains Rat Snake? I've got a few here. Um, this one's asking, like corn snakes, do they go through a blue phase? Okay. Um, so what you're referring to there, um, all snakes go through. Um, so when a snake gets ready to shed its skin, because again, it's, it's outgrown the one it's in now, it needs a slightly bigger one, maybe like some of us after this quarantine, um, they, they, uh, they produce a, um, a substance from their body that helps them uh, get out of that skin. And um, it kind of gets behind the scale on their eye and makes their eye look like a blue lens and makes their colors very washed out, very whitish, grayish, or even bluish. That's what blue phase is. Uh, and that means that they're just about to shed their skin. Um, and right after they shed their skin is about the prettiest that they're going to be. They're, they're, the skin underneath there is fresh, shiny, colors really pop. Um, and when they're going through that blue phase, that's when they're the most agitated and likely to bite you because they can't see. They don't see spectacularly to begin with. So when they really can't see because those scales over their eyes are, are clouding up or, or, or in blue phase, um, they get really agitated. Um, so we talked about snakes not seeing very well. They get most of the information from their environment with that tongue. If you're a pit viper, you have a, a sensory organ in your face, like a rattlesnake, um, to help you out a little more, but these guys don't have that. Um, can snakes hear? Well, they don't have external ears. They don't have external ear openings. And um, so they, they can't really hear. They can, they can sense vibration. So if I were to uh, bang my foot on the floor next to this guy's bag, he would certainly feel that. He would feel uh, a deer getting close to his hiding spot. Um, he would feel thunder. 
during a thunderstorm, that kind of thing. So they're not without that sense. Of, that sense. It's just uh, not great in them. Great Plains rat snake. Any other questions? Um, there's uh, several here. Um, how do you tell or can you tell if a snake is male or female? Okay, good question. Let me put... I have a prop ready because I thought someone might ask me that very good question. Let me get in here. So I have these little metal ball tipped probes. They're stainless steel and I have them in, in about six sizes. Um, these are called snake probes. So what you do is you select a ball tip for the appropriate size snake, usually very, very tiny. And you hold the snake and you locate the snake's cloaca, which I'm hoping you can see is right there past my fingernail. So the cloaca or the vent, it's another name for the snake's anus. Um, it's a body opening. And you're gonna take that ball tipped probe and you're going to very gently insert it into the snake's cloaca. And you're going to feel, I'm not gonna do it to this guy because he's a little squirmy, but I just wanna show you what we're looking for. You're gonna put that ball tipped probe in down this way towards the tail tip, okay? And what you're feeling for is a reproductive organ. In male snakes, uh, the reproductive organ are called hemipenes. Um, imagine like two fingers of a glove going down uh, the tail towards the tail tip, okay? Like two empty fingers of a glove. That's the reproductive organs and they can evert those um, make them go outside their body and, and insert them into the female's cloaca. So if your ball tip probe goes down a few scale rows, depends on the size of the species, but you're very gently trying to see where there's an end. Um, if it goes down a ways, you're looking at a male because you, you're, you're obviously got room inside that hemipene, that finger of the glove. If it's really, really shallow or relatively so due to the size of the snake, that's a female. There is no finger glove there, glove of a finger there. There's no hemipene. So you're looking at a female and that's how you tell the difference. Other than that, you got to wait around at bars and see what bathroom they go into. Oh man. So there's a, I'm, I'm going to put a couple together here um, just, just to uh, cover more. So, there's some questions here about if a if all snakes have patterns on their skin and if snakes of the same species can be different colors. Yes, so um, there are patternless snakes. There are species that exist that have no pattern. They're just a plain green snake. One that comes to mind is a racer. Uh, racers are, are pretty much just a uniform kind of pale bluish green. Uh, then you have snakes like, say, remember our, remember our yellow and black desert king snake. They have a pattern. Uh, but even within that pattern, it can vary within the species. Um, very rarely, but I'm sure it happens, you can find individuals that are patternless, that should have a pattern, but there's some genetic mutation that's not showing uh, any pattern at all. Um, and then, like, say, within the king snake, uh, again, there's, there's that mix of black and yellow. You might, sign, you might find one that's 70% black, 30% yellow, or you might find an individual on the same road, same population, that that's flipped. It's just genetic uh, variation. It's just uh, variation within the species. Um, was there another part of that question that I missed? I think you covered that one. Uh, there's several questions about what snakes prefer to eat. And then after your last comment, what bars they prefer. <laughs> well, snakes uh, in our area love rodents. 
mice, rats, uh, rabbits, squirrel, chipmunks, that kind of thing. Uh, but there are snail eating snakes in other parts of the world. There are bird specialists. There are fisher snakes. There are, are your aquatic sea snakes that spend their life underwater pretty much the majority of their life and eat fish. So uh, if you can imagine an environment, uh, snakes have, have taken to it. Snakes are located on every continent except Antarctica. Pretty amazing. Um, do we have another poll question we want to go to? Which of the following causes the most deaths in the U.S. per year? This is according to the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC you've probably heard of. And your choices are TV and furniture tip over accidents, dropping a big TV on your head in other words, being attacked by a dog, getting hit by lightning, or getting bitten by a snake. In the US, which one of those causes the most deaths? I get out another guy. Hope you guys like our poll questions. We thought it'd be a way to make it a little more interactive. All right, let's see what you had to say. So uh, the winner was TV and furniture accidents, 56%. And you're right. So uh, every one of those accounts for more deaths in the US every year than snake bite does. Let me say that again. Lightning strike, dog attacks, people falling off ladders and dropping large furniture on their head kills more people in our country every single year than does snake bite. So why are we so scared of snakes? Why aren't we scared of dogs? Dogs kill more people in the US every year than snakes do. Something to think about there. This next snake is a baby. And this baby is a trans-pecos rat snake. Another rat snake. Let me see if I can show you his pattern. He's just barely bigger than my hand. Trans-pecos rat snakes are really, really cool. Talk about a, talk about a New Mexico specific species. Um, so there is a, there's a river in Texas called the Pecos River. And the part of Texas west of the Pecos River is referred to as the Trans-Pecos. Um, this guy is found in that part of Texas, up a small swath through the, the southern center of our state and into Mexico. And that's it. These guys are found nowhere else on earth. So people come from all over the place to look for Trans-Pecos rat snakes. Now this is what they call a blonde face. They can be slightly different colors that I'm gonna show you shortly. And I want you to see that the pattern down the back is kind of like H's. Or if you're a Star Wars fan, a TIE fighter. And they have, if I can get close enough, almost blue eyes. Do you see that? Trans Pecos rat snake. This guy will get a lot, a lot bigger. Um, he'll get maybe uh, five, six feet long as an adult. Um, the biologist that keeps these snakes um, recently had a long-term captive blonde Trans Pecos rat snake like this uh, pass away on him. And it was caught as an adult. And then he had it as an outreach animal for another 25, 26 years. So even after it had reached adulthood, it lived with our biologist friend for another quarter of a century. Pretty amazing. Trans-Pecos rat snakes. 
People come from all over the world to try to find these, and we have them right here in New Mexico. trans Pecos Rasnik. Do we have any questions about that little tiny guy? So you already answered um, how, how large they can get. Um, oh, they're coming in so fast. Um, during what season do snakes mate? So they mate in the spring, uh, usually coincide at the, the peak of activity is going to be coincident with our monsoons, so our rains. So um, down here in the south, we usually say that our monsoons kick in right around Independence Day, July 4th, um, and that's probably going to be the height of, uh, of snake activity and breeding. Um, there's a question on how do you, are you able to tell or how do you know how old snakes are? You can't, really. Um, so we'll get to, we'll touch on that a little bit in, an, in another poll question, I believe, coming up. Um, but uh, snakes display indeterminate growth. Um, that means um, if they can find enough nutrients coming in, they will get as big as that supply will let them. Um, so you might find a king snake adult that never gets bigger than a foot and a half. But then you might find another one that's four feet, five feet long. Just depends on how well they're eating. Um, there are several questions about venomous snakes. Um, what the deadliest snake is in New Mexico? Are baby snakes more venomous? And several kind of along that those lines. Okay. Um, yeah, I can I can try to take a stab at that. Um, I, I'm not sure which one. I think you could argue it a, a bunch of different ways about which one is the most dangerous venomous snake that we have. Um, I think most people would probably say the Mojave rattlesnake. Um, so venom comes in two types, um, hemolytic and neurotoxic. Hemolytic um, necrotizes the tissue. It makes your tissue rot um, at the site of the, of the bite. Um, it kills you that way. Um, neurotoxin shuts down your central nervous system, it shuts down your brain, telling you to breathe, telling your diaphragm to, to expand and contract. Um, so usually you'll have something like a, a, um, a coral snake. We have coral snakes in the western, very extreme southwestern part of our state, um, and they are neurotoxic. They're our only representation for the member of the cobra family. Uh, but then you might have something like a western diamondback, which is um, more um, hemolytic. So then you have the Mojave rattlesnake, and it has both, a little cocktail of both. So uh, I'd, I'd probably say a lot of people would argue that that's, that's one, that one's, that one's pretty dangerous. And what was the other part of that question? Um, oh, do baby, are baby, um, baby snakes more venomous than adults? So um, the, the answer to that one is out. Um, people have researched that a little bit. Um, what seems to be um, a good answer, as far as we know currently, is that um, adult snakes learn how to use their venom effectively. It costs them nutrients to produce that venom and they want to use it to, uh, to acquire prey. They don't want to use it for defense. That's very secondary. They want to use it to eat. Um, so um, my, maybe the prevailing opinion is that um, adult snakes know that, oh, it's a smaller mouse, I can get away with injecting a smaller amount of venom. Oh, it's a larger rabbit, I need to inject a lot of venom. Baby snakes haven't learned that yet. So that's why um, we, we think, as far as research stands now, is that, uh, that baby snakes can be more dangerous uh, because they haven't really learned yet not to just uh, shoot uh, all of their ammunition in one go. Uh, but you can get a bite from an adult snake, that's what's called a dry bite, um, which when no venom injected at all. It all depends on the, the snake's temperament, the level of scare that, that startled the snake, and all kinds of environmental factors like that. Okay, I'm going to try to lump a few more together. So what time of day and season are snakes most active, and do all snake species den in the winter months? 
Okay, so uh, yes, all of our snakes den in the winter months. Um, they might not actually go full dead asleep like a bear would. They can move up and down in their what's called a hibernaculum, the place where they're hibernating communally. Um, they might uh, wake up to get a drink of water or they might even come to the surface on a sunny day. So it's not just full torpor. Um, they can they move around a little bit. And now what was the first half of that question again? The time of day and season that snakes are most active, sorry. <laughs> so uh, this time of year, um, snakes are going to be what we call crepuscular. They're going to be um, active in the morning and at night. Um, that is when the temperatures are extreme enough to kill them. Um, now, as we get hotter and hotter and we go into our summer months, our snakes will shift to almost entirely nocturnal activity to avoid that extreme heat. Um, they have to do that uh, because they are ectotherms. Um, ectotherms are animals that derive their body temperature from their environment. So we mammals, uh, we, we take in nutrients, we take in food, and that's fuel for the furnace. We burn those calories to, to, uh, to move our body. Um, that means that we have to eat pretty regularly. Snakes, on the other hand, uh, don't need the, the energy from their food to fuel their body, um, to fuel their, their, their body temperature, I should say. Um, they get their temperature from their environment. Um, the bonus to that is you don't have to eat very often. You may eat once or twice a month or something like that. There was a study of timber rattlesnakes in the southeastern United States, and it determined that for a female timber rattlesnake to have enough energy um, to, to reproduce in that season, it needed to eat one ground squirrel, just one for a year. Now, if it could get more than that, it sure would love to have it, but um, because they're not relying on that food um, to, to warm their bodies, um, burning those calories, um, they can get away with eating a lot less, but it means you are dependent on your environment. When it's really cold outside, you can't be active. You start to shut down, you may even hibernate. When it gets really, really hot outside, you can't sweat, uh, you can't um, cool off. You might go to the shade or go into the burrow to escape the heat. So it's um, just a different strategy. It's not weird, just different from us. What else you got? Um, there's some questions on habitat. So mainly the, the question is, are snakes mainly found in flat areas, warm areas, or can they also be found in the mountain, mountain ranges and cold areas? Yes. <laughs> All <of> the above. <laughs> so there, there are snakes uh, in, in, in flat, barren, uh, it's just sandy deserts of Africa, and there are snakes that live in the Himalayas where it's really, really extremely cold, and they survive by, by sticking around hot springs. So uh, yes is the answer to those choices. They, they, uh, they have established in, in, in most environments uh, across. You can find them in the mountains. Um, they're going to be more cold tolerant species up there. Um, as you get warmer and more moist, your diversity is going to go up more snake species present. Do we have a, do we have another poll question we can throw up there? Let's see what you guys think. Snakes dislocate their jaws to feed. You've heard that. Is it true or false? Do snakes dislocate their jaws to feed? We know they can eat very large food items. Let's see what you guys think. All right. Maybe everyone has had time to look that up on the internet. <laughs> What'd we say? Snakes dislocate their jaws to feed, 79% of you said true. 
and 79% of you are incorrect. They do not dislocate their jaws to feed. So, uh, snakes' jaws are very elastic. They have bone down the sides, just like you or I do, except on us, ours is fused right here on the chin. Theirs is not. Theirs has kind of like a stretchy cartilage right there, okay? So you can imagine if I didn't have my mandibles fused in the middle, I could swallow much bigger things. Um, so yeah, they, they don't dislocate their jaws. It's just very, very elastic here where it's attached and here. So you guys remember the coloration on the trans-pecos rat snake, right? This is what's called the blonde phase again. And I'm showing him again because I want to show you something a little bit different. Nice beige sandy color, right? Now when this species has lived on areas with lava rock for many, 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 many years, they can be a little bit different looking. So this snake I'm going to show you is also a trans-pecos rat snake, but it's one from a population found on those malpai, the black lava rock. Same species, trans-pecos rat snake. See those, uh, let me show you. See those H bars down the back? TIE Fighter, Star Wars fans. This is an adult. But this guy came from a population found on lava rock. So I hope you can see how that would be advantageous. Um, if you're a little bit darker, a little bit closer to the color of that dark substrate, you may have a, good, a better chance to, uh, to avoid predation. What eats a snake? Everything. Owls, hawks, other snakes, um, bobcats, badgers, coyote, people. Everything wants to eat. So these guys play a very important role, all snakes that is, in controlling our rodent populations, but then they're also food for many other species. They're vital to the food webs that they live in. So same species, when he's found on darker rock, the population becomes darker. Now snakes can't change their color. I don't want you to think that. They're not like chameleons that can decide, oh, well now I'm on a, a redder leaf, so I'm going to become more red. Um, they cannot do that. Um, now during breeding, colors can get more vibrant and maybe like on the other underside of the belly, you'll see um, a rosy pink color. But uh, yeah, I see a comment from Cheyenne. She nailed it. Yeah, it's evolution is what we're talking about here. So this snake was probably that, that beige color once upon a time. How long did it take? I, I'm, I'm not an evolutionary biologist, but millennia. Um, once upon a time, they were a little bit darker and being darker helped it avoid predation just a little bit more. And so it passed on those genes to become a little bit darker from a mutation to its offspring. Those offspring maybe survived just a little bit more and so on and so forth until you turn a beige snake into an orange snake. Pretty cool. Let's go to our next poll question. Here's one you guys should handle. You can tell a rattlesnake's age by counting its rattle segments. True or false? You've heard that, I'm sure. Let's see what you guys have to say.
poll results kind of split. 58% um, of you thought that was true. 42% of you thought that was false. And the 42% that said it was false are correct. So you cannot count these segments and determine a rattlesnake's age. Like we talked about earlier, a snake sheds its skin every time it outgrows that skin. That could be once a year. It could be five times a year. It all depends on how much food it's acquiring. So that one snake, one rattlesnake has a longer rattle than another one just means that it was able to found food more often. That's it. Doesn't mean it's older. It just got bigger faster. And these can break off. As you can see, this one's, this one's a little broken off here. They live in burrows, which are, um, they might move into a new burrow that's occupied by a rodent and the rodents can bite those off trying to scare the snake off. They can just get worn down going over tough rocks and spiky environments. They can lose those rattles. So that's not true. Pretty hard to determine a snake's age. Okay. Here is a neat little snake. Let me get in real close on this guy's head, if he'll cooperate. Or she, I don't know him. This is a hognose snake. You can see where it gets its name from the upturned rostrum there, the scales on the nose. Hognose snake, pretty cool, right? They're generally pretty little guys. Really, really easy, easy going. Now, remember how I said that, uh, that none of these snake species that I'm, I'm, I'm showing you today are venomous? This one's actually venomous, but it's only dangerous if you're a toad or a lizard. These are pretty popular in the pet trade. They are rear fanged venomous snake. So unlike vipers who have uh, those hypodermic fangs, um, in the front of their mouths, these guys' fangs are in the back of their mouths. And they're not dangerous to humans at all. And they use that venom to acquire their prey. These guys are toad poppers. Pretty interesting, right? So a favorite food of the hognose snake are toads. Uh, in fact, sometimes when people find hognose snakes in the wild and want to move them to captivity, it's hard to get them to eat anything but toads uh, in some occasions. So uh, you guys ever messed with a toad as a kid and uh, when it gets agitated, it inflates and gets a little bit bigger, right? Starts tilting its body towards the threat to look uh, big and intimidating. Well, the, you can imagine a toad's a lot harder to swallow when it gets inflated like that. So these guys have fangs in the backs of, the backs of their mouths to pop the toads. Pretty cool. Um, I'll show you this guy's belly. It's gorgeous yellow and black. This is a subspecies of the Western hognose. In the Eastern part of the US, they have an Eastern hognose. Hognose snakes are famous for doing something even cooler than having that cute little nose or popping toads or being venomous, they play dead. So when this guy gets threatened, he will flip over on his belly. Um, he'll start um, opening and closing his cloaca sometimes. Remember that, that vent, the, the anus? Um, and he'll, he'll gape his mouth open and he'll try to play dead. A predator seeing that, the hope is that it, it might think well, that, that creature may have died because it's diseased. So I don't want to eat that and then die myself as a coyote or a badger or what have you. So sometimes they get left alone. That's the idea. They're not great actors. Sometimes when I found a hog nose playing dead and they're on their belly like this, 
I'll flip them over to write them for a picture or whatever I'm trying to do. And they'll immediately flip back over because they believe that's how I'm supposed to look when I'm dead. I'm, sp I'm supposed to be on my back. So no matter how many times you write them, they won't lay still. They'll flip back over on their belly. <laughs> Pretty cool. Hog nose snake. Real easy to identify by that upturned snout. See that? Any questions on this guy? All right, you've got a few. Um, how do they flip over on their belly? Well, they've got muscles all the way down their body, and it's just a, it's just a, it's as easy as they can crawl through my fingers like this. They can also turn over. Just muscles. Um, what does the upturned nose do? Knowing that, I'm, I'm not super confident on answering, but I know this species burrows a lot. So it's probably for looking through sand for food items and probably also to stay out of their way when they're popping big toads. You can see how a, a downturn snout would get in the way, but then that's just, that's just my guess. No hog nose expert. And then you mentioned the pet trade and there were a few questions about whether you discourage pet snake ownership. Um, I don't I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> um, like I'll say, I'll say this when someone finds like a, a hog nose snake or a gray banded king snake in the wild and they, they take it home with them. Um, that's one less snake out there breeding and perpetuating its species, that population. Um, if you want a hog nose, or if you want a king snake or a gray banded king snake, you can readily find these in the pet trade. Um, so I would encourage you um, to go that route for a captive bred individual, rather than directly taking them from the wild. That's just my two cents. Any other hog nose questions? Uh, there's general snake questions. One of those is, um, can species cross with other species? Yes, if they're, if they're closely related, like say a Great Plains king snake and a corn snake. We looked at the Great Plains king snake earlier. Um, if they're very closely related, they can hybridize, but they've got to be closely related. In that case, it's the same genus. Um, so if you want to make like a hog nose and a king snake, no, that's not going to happen. Let's go to another question. Rattlesnakes are poisonous. True or false? Simple enough. We'll see who is listening because I think I talked about this earlier. So this one I've already given you the phone a friend option. Giving you the answer up front. And the results, about 50-50. Uh, rattlesnakes are poisonous. 52% of you said that is true. 48% uh, said that is false. Rattlesnakes are not poisonous. If you caught me discussing that earlier, uh, we talked about poison is ingested. So you have to eat it. So a mushroom was our example, or a blowfish. Um, you've got to eat it. Um, venom, on the other hand, is injected. So um, a spider bite, that's venom. A scorpion sting, that's venom. And a rattlesnake is just fine to eat. So they're not poisonous. They are venomous. Now, are there some snakes that are poisonous? Absolutely. We have a snake uh, in our area, one that comes to mind at least, is called the ringneck snake. The ringneck snake has very bright, orangey yellow colors on its belly to warn predators that it is in fact poisonous to eat. But rattlesnakes, no, the correct terminology there is venomous. Okay, I've got one more snake to show you.
and it is our biggest snake species native to New Mexico. It's also the most common snake species that I encounter. This big fella is a bull snake, also called a gopher snake, two common names there for the same species. And it is probably, let's see, probably getting close to six feet. Big old bull snake. These snakes probably get mistaken for something dangerous more than any other snake I've shown you tonight. Um, these guys have a behavior that gets them into a lot of trouble. Um, I don't know where they got the common name bull snake, but I like to think it's because of the show that they put on and that they're full of bull. They're, they're actually a harmless snake. Um, but they put on quite the display when threatened. So to start, a bull snake, if it's scared, will rattle its tail. Now every snake I've shown you tonight uh, can rattle its tail if it's scared. So uh, just because it rattled its tail at you doesn't mean it's a rattlesnake. Um, snakes can vibrate their tail and it can hit against dead vegetation, leaves, sticks, rocks, boxes in your garage uh, to make that rattling sound. It's not the same sound, but it's a, it's a close enough proximity to have people worried. Um, so that's step one. If he's still feeling threatened, he can flatten out his head. Now this guy is such a good ambassador. He's not scared of me. I'm not scared of him, but they can flatten out their head. Let me kind of show you that a little bit. Make it a little bit wider. Make it a little more arrow shaped with the jaw right there sticking out. To make you think it's something dangerous when it's not. Okay. And the display doesn't stop there. Then the bull snake can, can coil up off the ground. And what's that, that famous S coil position that we know from rattlesnakes and it can strike at you. More often than not, those are bluff strikes. The snake is just trying to keep you at a distance. It's not actually trying to make a, make a connection, but hey, if given the opportunity, it's going to bite you. Um, but then it doesn't even stop there. So now the tail's rattling, the head's flattened out. It's striking through the air at you. Now, to cap off the performance, uh, bull snakes have an extra flap of skin um, cartilage at the end of their windpipe, their trachea, just like you or I. With a trachea, they have a windpipe too. These guys have a piece of cartilage over the end of that. And when they get threatened, they can forcibly expel air over that uh, flap of cartilage uh, called, a, called an epiglottis and it can make a loud hissing noise, very intimidating. It's, it's kind of like I, I'm not, not a great bull snake impersonator, but something like that. So you put all that together and you wind up with a lot of dead bull snakes from garden implements uh, because people think it's a rattlesnake. But I want you to look at this guy's coloration there's saddles down the back. Even if he rattles his tail at you, take a closer look. Does it actually have a rattle or not? All but the youngest of young rattlesnakes will have a rattle, a button at the end of that tail. So look for that. And this guy is completely harmless. This guy is gonna remove more rodents from your property than you could imagine really beneficial snakes. Bull snake, gopher snake, super common, gets a bad rap because he puts on a big show, but he's just a big softy. Look at that. Any questions on bull snakes? 
Um, there's a couple that have to do with bull snakes and rattlesnakes. So uh, one is, can they breed with rattlesnakes? And one is, can they kill rattlesnakes? No, that, that, so they, they cannot breed with rattlesnakes. Um, now I've heard a lot of people say like, oh, well, bull snakes eat rattlesnakes. Um, has it ever happened? Almost certainly. Um, but do they do it with regularity? I don't think so. Um, so I hear that a lot and I don't correct it because it means more alive bull snakes. <laughs> but no, uh, I, I don't think bull, bull snakes are, are eating um, rabbits, pack rats, quail, bird eggs, things like that. Um, but yeah, have they, has it ever happened in history? Probably, certainly is, but not, not common. Um, can rattlesnakes and bull snakes nest or den in the same area? Yeah, they certainly can. Um, that's not un uncommon to see um, multiple snake species using the same communal den site, which again is called a hibernaculum. Um, so yeah, um, you'll see bull snakes in there sometimes with rattlesnakes, uh, maybe a Great Plains rattlesnake, I mean a Great Plains rat snake with a bunch of king snakes. Um, they do, they do a mixed company like that, certainly. So I said before, I was going to tell you a really easy way uh, to identify dangerous New Mexico snakes from non-dangerous New Mexico snakes. Super, super easy. You guys ready? So one snake to watch out for is a coral snake. Right, you've got to be in southwestern New Mexico um, to, to likely see a coral snake. And we know what a coral snake looks like. It's red, um, yellow, and white. I'm sorry, red, black, and yellow. Okay. And the, you've probably heard the expression, the rhyme, uh, red on black, red bands touching black bands, venom lack, red on black, venom lack, red on yellow, red bands touching yellow bands, uh, kill a fellow. Okay. So um, a mimic of the dangerous coral snake is the milk snake. Milk snakes are harmless. And in that one, you'll see um, red on black, red bands right adjacent to black bands, um, not a coral snake. So if we rule out coral snake, and again, you have to be in a certain part of the state to see that, then the only ones you have to worry about are the ones with rattles. That's it. That's it. Now you can't take that information and go west of New Mexico. As nearby as the Trans-Pecos region of Texas, Big Bend National Park, they have an endemic viper there. It's a copperhead um, and it is a viper, venomous, no rattle. You can't take that information and go west because then you're really getting into coral snake country. But right here where we live, if it's not a coral snake, brightly colored, not a milk snake, and it's not a rattlesnake, you don't have to worry about it. Everything else is harmless, absolutely harmless. Okay, if you take nothing else away from tonight, I really want you to, to learn that. Um, you can think about it, no rattle, no problem. What other questions do we have about my friend, this bull snake here? Um, there have been some questions on whether it's illegal to kill snakes. So it depends on the species. Um, I would encourage you to go to our website, uh, wildlife.state.nm.us, um, and search for um, reptile lists there. Uh, you can see we have a few species that are um, protected, um, endangered, and maybe otherwise. Um, but for these, these common snakes, no, it's not illegal to, to, to kill a snake like this. Not at all. It's not good for your property. It's not good for the environment, but it's not illegal. I think we have three poll questions left. If you want us to jump into a poll. Sure. Let's take a poll question. Snakes chase people. You've probably heard that. 
Do you think that snakes chase people? Yay or nay? I got, I got our desert king snake back out. Just so you'd have something cool to look at. My personal favorite. Okay, poll results. Snakes chase people. I'm happy to see that 76% of you said that is false and that is correct. Snakes don't chase people. What has happened in those situations is that fears got the better of us. I know when I was a kid, I was playing in a culvert large enough for a kid to walk through upright. And um, I saw a water snake coming out of the water. And I would swear to you at that time, it was coming right for me. But what was happening uh, um, on top of my adrenaline running was that I was between that snake and what it perceived as the exit. That's the only time it's perceived as, as a snake chasing someone. Snakes don't chase people. Um, think about our size compared to this little guy. They are terrified if you come right at them. They just want to get out of there. So they're either going to start bluffing and striking at you, and again, all the species I showed you tonight are harmless, or they're going to try to get out of there. And if you happen, between, you happen to be between them and what they see as their way out of that situation, it's going to look like they chased you, but I assure you they didn't. What else do you got, James? Oh, we covered that one. Let's see who was listening. Baby rattlesnakes are more dangerous than adults. We covered this one. You guys got this one in the bag, pun intended. Let's see what you guys had to say. Baby rattlesnakes are more dangerous than adults. Yeah, again, the verdict is out on that, but the prevailing opinion right now is that yes, baby rattlesnakes have lot not learned um, how to be efficient with their venom expenditures, and so they can be more dangerous. Yeah. So I, um, if I were to tell you guys that, uh, um, I was sitting in my backyard, hypothetical story here. Um, I was sitting in my backyard and um, I was with my little cousin and he's really young, you know, he's, we got young kids in the yard and a strange dog came into the yard and I don't know dogs. I can't tell dogs apart, which ones are, which ones are dangerous and which ones are not. So, you know, I, I took a garden implement, implement and I cut its head off. I don't want my little cousin getting hurt, you know? Sounds pretty cruel, right? Now replace the dog in that story with a snake. Why isn't it just as cruel? We learned earlier from data from the Centers for Disease Control that dogs actually account for more deaths in the US every year than snakes do. So why are these guys so feared? They shouldn't be. You can respect them. Rattlesnakes can be dangerous. So just respect them, keep your distance. But anything that's not a rattlesnake, it's not a coral snake in our area, you don't gotta worry about. Just let them do their business. They're just ridding your property of rodents. So uh, yeah, let's see, what else do we have? We have one more poll question, James? We have one more poll question. I think it's the same one that I asked you to, to begin with. So now, knowing what you, you know now, what we've gone over tonight, are you afraid of snakes? Hopefully I changed some hearts and some minds today. That's my goal. So we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up after this question, guys. But I, I really appreciate you joining us this evening. I hope you got something out of it. Hope we saved a few harmless snake lives too in the process. And uh, I gotta say, out of all the audiences I've had tonight, you've been the best one. I mean that. I'm right in here, guys. Are you afraid of snakes? 
76% said no. That's what I like to see. And I'll keep working on that 24%, believe me. I got a long career ahead of me. Um, I wanna thank you for coming tonight. Um, thanks for being brave and uh, learning about this much maligned group of animals. I hope you see that they're, they're nothing to be scared about. And if you got any more questions, uh, feel free to drop me a line. Again, my name is Jeremy Lane. And if you search Jeremy Lane, New Mexico Department of Game and Fish, you'll, you'll find my email address. Um, one more thing before we go. Um, we have a Facebook group. It's called, What Kind of Snake Is This New Mexico? Real easy. What kind of snake is this New Mexico? You guys go join that group. It's a place where uh, people who know how to identify snakes are offering their services. So if you see a snake in your yard, on your property, on your camping trip, snap a picture from a safe distance and then post it to what kind of snake is this New Mexico? And hopefully someone will identify it within a matter of minutes. Thank you so much. Sure appreciate you guys and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for joining us.